Hello, welcome back to Our People Speak. This is a series brought to you by Danakanaga in partnership with the Morris Thompson Center, Tana Chiefs Conference, with generous support from Doyon. My name is Dewey Kotlia Hoffman. We're joined this evening by Mr. Tom Huntington. And tonight we're going to be discussing springtime activities, memories from home, and across our region. And during this time of year, there's uh, different ways that people travel around, different activities that we take part in, and we're just here to spend some time with Mr. Huntington and hear what he has to say. We want our young people to learn about our way of life and our history, and we have so many resources with our community members, our elders, so we're very happy to have you here, Mr. Huntington. Welcome. Would you like to introduce yourself? Okay. Uh, my name is Tom Huntington. Uh, my native name is Taton. Uh, my uh, late parents, uh, Sydney and Angela Huntington. Uh, my, mother, my late mother was from the lower Kaikook River, and my late father was from the uh, upper Kaikook River. And uh, started out life in Hustia, and, and family moved to Galena. And that's where we grew up, so I can uh, cover that area. Uh, of uh, any time travel uh, or activity uh, to, uh, in that area. Granted, uh, the state is very big, uh, and um, we, we all do the same things. We all do things a little different. Alaska is big, uh, uh, vast, uh, geographical. Could where us be on different country and get so big, it's so different. Um, so that's who I am. That's it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, in the springtime, what are some of the activities that you might normally be involved with? Uh, prior, you know, we're still in a change of uh, change of lifestyle. We're tra still transitioning uh, people. Uh, the activities of the past becoming less and less uh, the activities nowadays are uh, um, less and less too because the people are not uh, carrying on the uh, traditional uh, things uh, you know in the, in the springtime uh, well I'll cover I'll cover uh, briefly uh, everything. Of all seasons, you know, there's okay. uh, there's different things you do, and traditionally everything was around where a hunter gatherer people, and it was always centered around harvesting and gathering of uh, of different resources, mainly to eat, because we're we're a Eat to survive, and we survive off what the land provides. And so, springtime, the transition from winter, from you're catching fur bears, if you're if you, if you're harvesting animals, and that the country's out there, you know, it it transitions from from uh, the land fur bears to to the water water animals and the the fish. And in tra the transition of uh, there's a certain time in spring, and right now it's uh, you have complete freedom. You're not restrict restricted by water; it's frozen. You're not restricted by snow because it's settled and it's just a glaze of ice over the whole country, and it makes it easy traveling. You could. Nowadays, the snow machine. Nowadays, in the morning, you could see a mountain is way over there, and basically could go in a straight line and get there. There's no all, pretty much all obstacles are. You could do it. You could make it through it or around it, but in a day's travel and this time of the year, uh, you're unlimited. Like my, my brother, 
my brother Gilbert and I, uh, about six years ago, you know, I called him up and I said, I want to go on a snow machine ride. And he, he said, come on out, you know, come on out. So I went out to Galena and he's got everything ready and uh, we're going to be gone a week. And he has, he has 55 gallons, five gallon jerry jugs in, a, in one sled and about 75 in another because that's how unrestricted travel is. You could just go and and believe it or not, we ran out of gas. We went to Husky for more gas because we were just cruising. It's just uh, unlimited travel. But like in all, all things, in all seasons, uh, there's things to, uh, you have to be careful. There's different uh, hazards. Uh, like, like I say, it's unrestricted right now. That's in the morning until late afternoon. The transition from winter to, to uh, into spring, it starts out unlimited travel. You're just, there's no restriction. And then from there to the later part of it, you have to be careful because what is frozen like concrete and ice in the morning you sink to the bottom in the afternoon and you have to be careful and you have to time your activity. Uh, and sometimes you have to wait until uh, the night freeze again and, and, and go mm -hmm. what, while you can, you know, what, the, what, what it, it allow you to do. Um, not, uh, and different, different aspect nowadays, the uh, community gatherings were, were, really uh, mobile people now, uh, whereas before it was walking or dogs, and now it's uh, airplanes and snow machines. You know, airplane, you can go anytime. Snow machine, uh, I, I already covered that, but uh, one of the aspects of uh, gathering in the spring now is uh, traveling one from one community to another to visit, to, to, for the spring carnival and stuff like that, and uh, and everybody uh, travels with that good time involved, but they really have to uh, remember they're out on the land. You have to be prepared. It is, it's it. There's a certain uh, awesomeness. Good, good. It'll. It'll gift you with good experience and stuff, but it is uh, brutally unforgiving if you make a mistake, if you're not prepared. Um, yeah, I'm older. Uh, I, I've lost some friends to mm. springtime travel, uh, and in that, that's why I say that uh, what's safe in the morning. Uh, my two buddies, they went exactly the same trail that they came uh, that morning. They were going back out in the afternoon, and they both lost their life. Mm. And uh, in the, in it, you lose your life by not being able to get out of the water. It's it's on the ice, but uh, it'll claim you uh, brutally fast. Uh, and so. So this, uh, it's fun, but you have to be prepared. I, my mom, my late mom, she said, uh, no matter where you go, you be prepared to ha walk halfway. Halfway is the worst you can get from, if you're going from here to there, halfway, you gotta be prepared to walk halfway. Halfway that way or halfway this way. If you're closer this way, you come back. If you're closer there, you go that way. And uh, and then for for me, it means uh, number one, dry socks. You could be miserable, but if you take care of your feet, that your feet will get you there one way or another. Not maybe not be in the best shape, but you at least you'll have a chance. Um, 
on a snow machine, I always carry a, a bag, uh, extra clothes. Uh, I, I carry an axe uh, and matches. Uh, uh, lunch, lunch is, uh, you need something to drink. But that axe and that matches, you know, th those are more important than uh, um, a firearm out there. Because that, that axe and that matches will save your life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Through your parents or maybe other people that you've come to know, did they ever describe specific place names for some of these areas that you would go through? You know, my, my dad, my late dad, um, he was born in Hughes, and his mother come from uh, the Dockley Hog River area, Hogata, and, uh, and he lost his parents at a young age, so he was on his own from when he was 12, he said. And uh, looking, looking at, uh, he lost his mom when he was uh, five years old, and uh, he had an estranged relationship with his father, so uh, uh, he was pretty much on his own. He was an adult at 11 years old. Mm. Built his first boat when he was 12 years old. And uh, for him, it was uh, the Hog River country, Hogatsa, in, uh, in the, the country between there and Hustia, uh Willow Lake and... and uh, Oh, I forgot the name of it. Slow nine mile, nine mile, below below Hog River to the uh, Overland Trail to Willow Lake to Five Mile Lake to Boat Lake to Hustlia, and uh, and and we lived in Hustlia. Then we moved to Galena, and uh, and my late mother when we moved to Galena, uh, of course I went to high school, moved away basically, and. Uh, when I went back there, uh, it's, it's kind of wintertime story, but it's, it still applies to no matter what season you go to. Uh, uh, I was kind of doing nothing in town, and, and my late mother, she said, uh, I want you to go trapping. And I, I told her, oh, I'll, 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 I'll try to find somebody to go with me. And... Uh, uh, a week later, you know, she was not very demanding, but she, about a week later she said, Hey, I thought I said I want you to go trapping. And I told her, I haven't found anybody yet. And she said, No. Uh, she never say, You're going trapping. But when she said, I want you to go trapping, that that's just like a demand that she wouldn't and I said, she said, she said, no, you don't have to find nobody. She said, it's better if you go by yourself. I was still 17 years old. And uh, she said, I'll, I'll, I'll get everything for you. You'll go out, the, just where you'll go. And, uh, and she sat down and talked to me and she said, uh, you're going out there. She said, I know. You know how to take care of yourself because you, you was with us all this time and you, I know you know how already. But she said, I want you to know you have to think about everything you do, every move you make. It, you swing that axe, you gotta make sure don't catch nothing. You go up the bank or you go down the bank, don't fall down, don't get hurt. And she said, all these different things, she said, because if something happened to you, nobody is going to come for you. And that, that really set my, set to me that, and that when I went out, everything I did, I, I, uh, it was just like my, my late mom was right here. She, are you doing it right? Are you doing it right? And it's just a simple self question, and it, it applies to, to, um, uh, all activities, no matter what time of the year. This winter time, you're just worried about cold and making it. But springtime, there's so many different hazards of them. The transition from winter to summer, and the transition from 
uh, early spring to late spring. The experiences out there, uh, it used to be muskrat, muskrat uh, trapping, um, uh, getting uh, waterfowl, uh, and a lo lot of good, fun activities and just being out on the land that uh, more and more people are not experiencing that. Again, we're in a, we're still in a transition from, well, who we were to who are, we don't even know who we're going to be yet. We're just mm -hmm. still in transition. We're, we're, we're still stumbling around in my eye. And, uh, so nowadays it's for fun to visit each other. You still have to keep in mind you, the, uh, the safety factors. Uh, let, let people know where you're going. And Fassi, for sharing that picture of what, what it's like and some of the things that we should keep in mind when we're traveling, particularly in this time of year, to make sure we're safe and people know where we're headed to and what our plans are. Can you describe, is there a, a favorite place that you used to like to go to or you still like to visit today? Uh, well, over time, uh, uh, I'm still, at, even at my age, I'm still exploring. I'm still finding good places. Um, way back in the day, not too long after high school, uh, there was four of us. Uh, geez, I don't know if we were even 20 years old yet. Uh, we went out, we went out uh, with snow machines and uh, we drug our canoes and camp and we stayed for a month and a half oh, wow. at uh, Hadzikatlot, that's uh, over the hill portage lake from from uh, Huslia to Kaikokon on the big portage, they call it. And uh, that was for the longest time, that was uh, a big highlight because uh, we um we we seen the whole transition mm -hmm. from winter and we we came down the Kaiko River with canoe and uh and that was that was a uh, a great experience and and uh great memory uh and that was just a one time thing and and then the lakes right in the Galena area uh muskrat hunting uh, waterfowl hunting, and uh, since I live up in Fairbanks now, and my brother-in-law and sister live in Minto, I uh, I get to experience the Minto Flats, and uh, to hear the waterfowl uh, in the Minto Flat in the spring, it's uh, uh, it's probably one of the wonders of the world to hear thousands of birds. To, to uh, even me being hard of hearing. Uh, it, you're just baffled by the, uh, what I think is their happiness to be back. Because mm. that life goes from silent winter to then the transition into spring. It just, it just comes alive and it's uh, pretty neat to see. Mm -hmm. And, but, um, I'll tell you another story safety related, uh, last spring. Uh, waterfall hunting, harvesting, or bird watching, however you want to call it. Uh, I had a very, very close call, but when I was, I don't, I wasn't even 10 years old yet in Galena, my late brother Arnold, we were walking across the river in the springtime, and he, he had this long pole, he had about a 12 foot dry pole, and, uh, and we were walking wide open, big Yukon River. And I asked him, uh, how come you got, you got a pole? How come you're packing that pole? And he said, uh, that's what you're supposed to do. He said, she said, you're just little, but get something willow. He said, if you go through the ice, he said, uh, if you don't have something in your hand, you're not going to make it. 
And I and then he was walking across. We went across the Kalislu there, and and uh, lo and behold, he went through, and he used that pole to hold himself up, hold himself up, and then and then he was hollering at me and, and talking to me, and then he told me where to crawl toward him, toward toward him, and they used that that willow I had, it get in the middle to displace my weight because instead of just on your feet if mm-hmm. you spread your weight out it'll hold you up better and and I, he told me which way to crawl to him and he worked he worked at holding that pole he pointed it to me and I got on the end and I held it and once I was able to hold it he, he hand over hand and pulled himself out wow and uh and then how many years later, uh, almost 50 years later, uh, I'm on Mento Lake, and uh, I, I forgot my phone. We were out there, and I forgot my phone. So I said, okay, I'll, make a, I'll go out there and while it's frozen in the morning and come right back. My mistake was coming right back. I should have waited till the next morning to come back on a frozen anyway but I got my pole and I got a little plastic sled that I'm pulling my gear in so it's not on my body and uh, I made it out there and back and getting off the ice where we made a little pole and willow bridge I got to that and realized I was in trouble because where the poles went from the land to the ice it it rotted out right there and it was there was nothing holding it anymore mm-hmm. and, and uh, I did everything right uh, in that I didn't have a short rope on my sled I had a long rope in so that if, you know I, I tied a stick and I threw it so if I made it across I could pull it so I'm not pulling my sled close and anyway I fell in and uh, I had about a about a 10 foot Dry pole, just a small pole, light. It just, and as soon as I went in, I, I had hip boots on because there was places where we had to walk in the water, and I was able to to uh, jab that pole down. It was sticking out about that far, so I know it was about eight feet of water. And um, wearing hip boots and when they're filled, it's just like lead weights. You could barely lift your leg and. And I had my shotgun on, and I'm holding myself, and took my shotgun, and I threw it toward the uh, shallow water. And uh, and then from there, while I was holding myself, I, I uh, that willow, willow and pole bridge, I, I bundled it up, and, and then I worked my leg over it. And once, once I was on top of it, I could start making it toward shallower water. And... Uh, and all this time, you know, most people would just panic when it. But what you can't panic because you, you're you're you have to keep a clear thought process. Like for me, at doing that, I just talked myself through it. My first thing was stay calm, stay calm. But in, in your mind, you're saying, "Hurry up, hurry mm-hmm. up, hurry up, do something." But that's that's really not. You have to stay conscious of your every move because your your next move might be your last one, and so I'm holding myself up there and I straddle the, this pole and holding it up. I and the the bottom ice is slippery, so you gotta move that pole and make sure it's solid and 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 work your way. And of course, you know I'm I'm soaking wet, uh, and. Uh, but I got my, I got my, uh, my matches and my big lighter and a Ziploc bag, and uh, thank God I had my phone in there too. I put it in there, and then I got to the shore, and uh, uh, it just started blowing. It was just, it it started just a, as a little breeze, and then just in minutes it was it was blowing kind of hard, and I said, man, I gotta I gotta get out of the wind because. I had to strip down my clothes to, to, to bring them out. 
And uh, then I put some of it back on and I just got on a snow machine, my gear, and went back into the portage where it was wind protected. And I stopped, made fire, and, and start drying my gear. And I spent half a day, because uh, I knew from there on I was, you know, on ground and uh, I was good. So I just took my time to dry my gear as much as possible. But in those uh, critical situations or moments, you really have to cl uh, keep a clear head. And uh, and I'm glad I'm glad for my my late brother for uh, he saved my life. It's almost 50 years later. You know he's been gone for. Uh, 40 years, been gone for 40 years about, and, and uh, I still credit him with saving my life because he told me what to do, and I still adhere to, to what he said. And, um, and th those stories are still out there, you know, uh, on what to do and how to, the main thing is to, uh, to have a sound mind, I guess, mm -hmm. or keep, keep a clear head. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty thrilling adventure you were on both times. I, I imagine that there's uh, all these things you can do to prepare, and yet once you're in that moment, there's knowing about it, and then there's doing it. And it takes a lot to, like you said, keep calm. Yeah. And, uh, uh you know, the springtime activities of the past, there's, uh, it's such a blessing to go out there, to experience uh, what the people that we come from, what they, uh, their normal life, uh, uh, and, and to experience it. And uh, unless we're out there, uh, we'll, we'll just stay, we'll still, stumble along because, uh, you know, my late mom, she always says, know where you come from. Know who you come from. The people that you come from, they made it with nothing. He said, so you'll be fine. And, uh, the, uh, you know, I still carry a lot of, a lot of my folks with me. Uh, I use them every day. They've been gone, but I still... They're, they're still my guide uh, and uh, have a lot of aspects uh, of life and uh, uh, the uh, there's so much to do out 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 there uh, especially when that that about three weeks of uh, unrestricted just go from point A to point B uh, that is that is uh, an adventure. Uh, I mean, we we load up with a bunch of gas and just go, mm -hmm. not knowing where we're going to go or what tail we're going to go over or what we're going to see, but uh, we know it's going to uh, all be good. Uh, and and but again, you just have to be uh, prepared. Always be safe. Always ask yourself the question: Am I doing it right? Mm -hmm. and um so fun yeah with uh, with that experience you can you can have a lot of freedom to go places and maybe not rely on the airline as much or you know just have the skills to to participate in some of those things is there anything that you would want to tell our our young people especially who are thinking about what they could be doing or learning about or, or or anything if you had a message for our youth? I think since less and less people are doing it, for the real young people, I would say to ask your parent or your uncle to 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 go out there. Uh, uh, to be to be internet free to be, uh, to let uh, your senses uh, enjoy what you don't, wouldn't normally otherwise experience. Uh, 
all the stuff that, you know, where you come from. Uh, for me, I, I, it's a kind of a, a bum way to look at it, but it's just like, it, for me, it's just like a retriever. A retriever is trained to do something, and it's, they say it's bred in to do that. And even if you don't train that retriever to retrieve, it'll still retrieve. And that's the way I see uh, native people. You just got to go out there, and it's just right below the surface, and it just, you'll be amazed at what you could do by just presenting yourself out there. And it, and, uh, all the smaller details on, you know, uh, there's a lot of smaller details. Finding good camp spot, finding good ground to sleep on, uh, finding good viewing places, finding the safe places to go to enjoy the different areas. Because uh, we lived in a vast state, uh, terrain, country is different, and there's different... Uh, uh, things you got to be aware of, but um, just get out there somehow, find yourself a way to present yourself, and and you you'll find that you'll enjoy it. I'll tell a story. My my daughter said we're going to fish camp, and she's on the game, and said I don't want to go to fish camp. Ain't nothing in fish camp. And we go out there on the Yukon River between Ruby and Galena. And three weeks is up and the boat is loaded. We're ready to go. And here she is sitting in front of the cabin, just sitting there. And so I went up to her and I said, it's time to go. She said, Dad, do we really have to leave? Just in that three weeks, it went from, I don't want to go, there's nothing here, to find out that there's uh, a lot out there and a lot of good out there. You can find yourself out there. Mm. I mean, uh, and, and another one is uh, springtime activity, beaver trapping. My grandson, him, he was really stuck on these, these gaming. I don't know gaming, but I know he's gaming. And and it he'd visit us and but he'd be just zoned out on what whatever he's doing. And I I tell him, grandson, let's go take a ride. So I don't want to take a ride. I said let's go on a ride on snow machine. He said I don't want to go. I said no, grandson. You're going with me. And so we went across across ten the river from the campgrounds and end up on the uh, Tanner Flats out there. And I seen some beaver houses. So I just made a quick trip and came back and he, he was not impressed or anything about going out. I said, we're going again. He said, ah, yeah, but I'm open. But this next time I went out, I bought my shovel and ice pick, beaver snares, and uh, so Went out and I got to the beaver house. I them, let's set a, let's set, let's try to catch a beaver. He said, ah, I won't catch a beaver. So um, I said, how about you want to drive a snow machine? He said, yeah. I said, okay, drive around the lake here. Just stay in view while I I make this beaver set. And um, he went cruising around. I I made a couple of sets and went to the next lake and another beaver house and we did the same thing. And um, and then we got back, and uh, I made a deal with him. I said, uh, we're trapping partners, you know. And he said, what? Not the, the, we're trapping beaver. We're trying to snare those beaver. I told him, uh, I'll pay you $10 for every one we catch. And he went, okay, you know. And uh, and then so we go out there that, that third time, and... Uh, we caught a beaver, and that the to see him uh, 
to see his interest, he went from, eh, I don't mean, going to just like we caught a beaver and it was just the biggest thing. And and then so the fourth time we went out there, he was ready. I mean, he wanted to go. And uh, we caught eight beaver. And uh, the last time back, Wanda, coming back, I stopped on a lake and I made sure I made sure I brought my my cash hmm. and uh, I stopped and I never said nothing. He said, "What we're doing?" He said, "We're we're beer, we're trapping partners, right?" He said, "Yeah." So I was payday. Them how much how much beaver we got? He said, "He said eight. I told him, "Well, how much I owe you?" He said, Eighty? I said, yeah. So I gave him four twenties, and uh, and uh, so from that to skinning it, stretching it, and I tan, I tan fur, so I'm tanning beaver skin, and uh, he's watching me, and then uh, he just su surprised me and and just melted my heart when he said, he said, Grandpa, I want beaver skin mitts, I want beaver hat. And I want beaver fur for trim on my slippers, and uh, and that made me uh, so happy that. Uh, and then we couldn't go this spring. My my snow machine broke down. But about a month ago, he asked me, "Are we going again?" Hmm. So uh, there's fun stuff out there, and uh, and good family stuff, uh, good eating too. Beaver meat's very healthy for you. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's way better than getting a high score on a game. Yeah. Having that experience out there together. Yeah. I love that when our um, our grandparents and our grandchildren get to do things together and be active and especially with our, our young native men, you know, sometimes we like to learn by doing things and it's good to talk about what we're feeling and how we're doing in school, but nothing replaces, you know, what you're describing, like that, yeah. that connection and, and learning together. Um, I'll say that uh, summertime, wintertime, fall time, springtime. Uh, you go out, you go out, and especially in the summer. You know, we hopefully we get to fish. Nowadays they say we can't fish and stuff like that. But in my travels, you know, I go hundreds of miles to the to the clean area where uh, the camp was, and and you see all the old camps. Nobody there. Mm. For me, it's kind of sad. Yeah. And because I know the people that used to go to those camps. And I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of this. It's all there. The country is lonesome for you. I want you to go out there to utilize what it could give you, whether it be fun, food, camping, family time. It wants to give you that. And that country, our country is calling us to, to Come and join me. Be safe, though. Yeah. Yeah, I sure wish there's more opportunities to learn and how to be out there. And it's um, there is a lot of changes going on with our families and our communities. Yeah. You got to go to school. You got to do this. You got to do that. And it's almost like a luxury to have the time. Or the gas money, yeah, and um, maybe it could keep going that way. It's also possible that there could be more young people interested in learning and how to take the steps to become a trapper and how oh, yeah. to hand uh, you know do things by hand like we did instead of just going somewhere and running a credit card. You know, it's good to learn how to do things with your hands. It's important. It's actually very important for us not to forget where we come from. Because no matter what culture we're in, 
history has a way of repeating itself, whether it be illness, war, starvation. This country, our society is due for a hard time that some of our people that we come from say, be ready, because it's coming. And there, it's the truth. No matter how good we think we have it, we, we can't forget where we come from and know how to survive and, and use the land because maybe that someday that's all there will be. Mm-hmm. And those ones that know how to use it are the ones that are going to make it. Yeah. Yeah, good words. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Anything at all? Uh, I'll just share what, what kind of reiterate what I say, you know. It's out there uh, calling you. Uh, come use me. Come enjoy me. Uh, and and it's, it's different than what where we've been led so far. Uh, we can get way off topic and go, you know, uh, too far, but just as far as the land, uh, you know, right now, where we're being led is, we're even being restricted and saying we can't do what, what's in us, what, what, to, to fish and trap and, and, and enjoy it they're saying you could only you could only harvest this much when when in this much and you can't fish because there's no fish and you can't cut that tree because somebody owns it and you can't do this and you can't do that it's very hard for me to not be a lawbreaker because it's inherently in me to do all those things to trap to fish to hunt to harvest to enjoy to uh, all that stuff it just it just part of who i am and uh, and uh, who a lot of pe- a lot of native people are that that's who we are and and we're told we can't do this can't do that but i'm saying Enjoy who you are. Realize who who you are, where you come from, and be yourself. Be ourself, and uh, that's what I say. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, I like it. I um, I failed to mention who my parents are and grandparents. Uh, D. Olin is my mom, and her parents are the late Lillian and Fred Olin, and John and Lorraine Honey raised her. Yeah, and I understand uh, your dad and Johnny Honey were were good buddies. Yeah, and he used to run fish eggs. He'd run the fish wheel all day or all night. I don't know. They they were busy all the time, and then he'd take um, when we were getting ready to go to bed. He'd get in the boat and run his eggs up to uh, Late Sydney's, uh, where he worked on fish. Yeah, and um, man, those guys were full of energy, right? Go, 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 whenever, you know, it's time to play. Uh, nope, got to keep working. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say about those guys, you know, Grandpa John Honey was a very special man. Uh, my dad, he was a very special man. Those guys, uh, everybody said they were hard workers. They didn't even think, it didn't even enter their mind that what they were doing was hard. Uh, just living was hard, but that was just everyday stuff. So it, it was just just life. That's what, that was it. What we consider hard now was just life. And, and, uh, and and they both went through some tough times. Yep, from an and, early age. Yep. And very, very, uh, I, I so enjoyed uh, visiting uh, your grandpa, uh, Johnny Honey, and uh, going, going, stopping at Big Eddie and 
or climbing the Cochrane Hills right there and um and uh listening to his uh dog mushing exploits and fishing exploits and and uh yeah, those are special people. We come from special people. And uh those special people, like I say, in each one of us it's right below the surface, ready to come out and 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 somebody further down the line will say say that about you maybe if you're if if you walk a good walk, you know. Yeah. Maybe someone doesn't even know they could pack a whole moose leg until they try it out. Yeah. And you just gotta you just gotta go for it sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. uh changes. Uh while we still transition from winter to summer with this springtime, it's changing because of uh, the warming earth. Uh, whereas before, we knew the two two parts of spring, the early spring and late spring. Nowadays, that timetable is shifting, and uh, it warm up quicker. Or so there's. There's still, uh, it's, I would say it's more dangerous nowadays, probably. Um, uh, uh, because of, you know, it's getting warmer and warmer all the time. And uh, that late spring is, uh, it's a deadly one. You just got to be very, very careful. Mm -hmm. That, that, uh, you know, always be prepared to walk halfway back or halfway forward. Always prepared for that. And, yeah. Good advice. One thing I always wish I saw in person was when it's, um, when the river is breaking up and it's just crashing around those big icebergs. Oh, yeah. And especially at Galena and Ruby where it's, about a mile across, right? Yep. Can you describe what that's like? You know, I was, 2013 was a, a 500 year flood. They had another big flood, 1971 uh, in Galena. Galena used to be just downtown. And, and there was a Boy Scout cabin, they call it, where the community hall is now. Don Lowe, they, Don Lowe had built across there. So it was just Max and Bev Pondorf had a little little store, and uh, in the winter of seventy seventy one, it was very cold and not much snow. So having no insulation, the the uh, Yukon drainage, the ice thickness was very very thick, and uh, and. The thing that causes those floods is, if not the massive amount of snow, it's the thickness of the ice. And that when it's time to go, you know, water, you cannot stop the force of water. No matter there's, no matter what, uh, uh, there's nothing that'll stop water from blow, flowing downhill. Nothing. It'll crush anything. 1971, uh, the aftermath of that uh, flood. My late mother, uh, when she was young, she was about five foot seven, pretty tall for a for a, a lady, and she's standing next to my brother Charlie. He was small, and she has about a three foot stick in her hand, and she's standing up straight, and she's holding on that stick, and she's touching the thickness of that ice. I mean that that's eight feet thick. Uh -huh. And anyway, they were evacuating everybody. To, Galena had a military base at the time. They were flying everybody to Anchorage, helicoptering everybody up to Campion Hill. And there was a group of us at at uh, where that community hall is now. There ended up being uh, my late parents. Uh, Late Don Lowe, 
late uh, Joe Frank, my late brother Carl, late Raymond Paul, and myself. Everybody else was evacuated. And uh, you could hear hear the rumble out there on the, on the Yukon, and you could see it. When you see that big a mass going by, it, it throws your senses off. You're, you're kind of, the earth is moving. That's what, that's what it feels like, and you're, uh -huh. you don't know if you're on solid ground or not, and it's just your, your, your visual sense is fooled. That, and, it, and you hear the, the grinding and the rumble, you hear trees snap, you hear all kinds of stuff to where normal conversation you can't do. You have to holler at each other. And and then the and then the when the started jamming up down river, uh, when you're out by the water, you could tell when there's some leakage going by, it, it just slowly rises up backwards. But this one, that time, it just went poop. It just, just like jump and stay there, jump and stay there. It was sealed off, and that was, it was, and it's, it just takes a couple hours to become downright scary. And uh, when, the, you know where the community hall is in Galena? Mm -hmm. That, that. It's kind of open to the old river right there. We're where the community hall is now. When when that water started rushing, and then it washed out the road, and it kept raising, ice started coming. There was a power pole, and it sheared off that power pole, and the water's coming up in that. When it sheared off that power pole, it would just hit it, and it would spin it. It was wrapping up the power lines, going like that, going oh, like wow. that, and then, and that that ice going by there. I would just guess to be. Because it was, low back there, and it was filling up on the Yukon, and it just started shooting back, probably thirty miles an hour, and then, and it, and it's going back to the lake, and you just hear this. I don't know what it sounded. It sounded like a whoo, whoo, just like that. What it was going, it was just filling up the lake, and then the ice would just jump up and stay there, jump up and stay there until the whole lake was filled up. We had we had ice in that lake all summer, wow. because it was just just massive. I mean, and uh, late Don Low, uh, he had a wolf old wolf that they kept in a fence and uh, it's a wild wolf but they, they had it and we had to turn it, turn all, all the dogs and everything loose so so we couldn't save them it'll they'll save themselves and he turned that that wolf loose and it took off it ran back the ridge and it came right back and it knew that its safest place was was with us and it was so scary. It changed a wild animal to a pretty tame dog. Hmm. It was uh, that dramatic. It was. It was. It can be that. It's uh, uh, downright scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to thank you for the generosity of your time and all of the good words and advice that you've shared with our our viewers today and with myself. It's such an honor to have the ability to share these stories with you. And it's, it's important to, to think about who we are and where we come from and where we're headed into the future. I'm hoping that some of your tips will help our people stay safe. And if they're going through a stressful time, which we all are, to to take the chance to be calm and think about one step at a time. Dao to be calm within yourself.
that's gonna it's gonna help a lot of people. Yeah, I'll say one last thing. This is straight from my dad. I say we're in transition. We kind of know where we were, but we don't know really where we're going. We're doing the best we can. Everybody's doing the best they can, and uh, and uh, like anything in life, uh, things happen, um, and uh, there's one constant. Uh, and that's uh, stepping forward. Always step forward. Always go forward. Uh, sometimes life is good, and we just chest out, straight up, long strides, and we're just going good. And some stuff happens. Uh, sometimes you have to shorten up your step, but uh, one thing don't change. You step forward. That's it. Uh-huh. That's it. That's all the time we have today. Uh -huh. And um, hope everyone stays safe out there, uh, thinking about the travelers and all of our families and friends who are watching. And be on the lookout for the next segment of Our People Speak. You can follow the Morris Thompson Cultural and Visitor Center through social media. And thank you to everyone. Thank you, crew. Thank you, Mr.